Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to introduce pegs in Toon Boom Harmony. So a peg, the best way to think of it, I think, is to think of it as a parent object in Harmony. The reason that it's called a peg rather than something like a parent is it's named after this device, which is what we used to use to animate by hand with. And so you have these registration bars up here, and you have these pegs. And so you take your paper and place it on the pegs and you would use it to kind of keep all your drawings in place and you could even move your, your entire animation around using that. So again, the best way to think of it, I think, is, is like a parent object. It doesn't show up in your render, so it's invisible to the render, but you parent it to your drawings to help move them around. And you can move them, you can scale them, rotate them, you can, you can do all that. And so it's it's paramount to use in 2D character rigs, for instance. And when you're creating a 2D character rig, you're going to have many different drawing objects. And let me just turn these on right here. And you're not going to want to animate directly onto these. That's, that's a mistake that you want to avoid. What you're instead going to do is you're going to create pegs or parents to each of these and then animate on those pegs. So let's see here. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is this square layer, I have this triangle layer, and then I have this little rough animation, I'll press play, or I just have a little bouncing ball thing happening there. And I'm gonna use the node view, so if you don't have the node view open, you just find the panel where you want it to, to be placed, find this plus button, and then go down to node view, and that'll open that up. And in the node view, just this is a little aside, a little small trick, is when you're turning on and off the visibility or enabling or disabling an, a drawing object, in Harmony, you can press these these I buttons down here in the timeline, or you can see in the node view there's turn red, and so if you press, um, let's say I want to re-enable this animation, I'll press A as an apple, and then if I want to disable it, I can press D as in dog. So that's just a small trick that you can do. So before I show how to create a peg, first I want to just quickly um, remind everyone just how you can move around a drawing. And again, you're gonna, with a character rig, you're, you're not gonna wanna animate on your drawings. Is So you have the selection tool up here, and if I take the selection tool and I move it, you can see the triangle breaks apart. And so I usually think of the selection tool more of a tool to create the drawing, but when it comes time to animate, you're gonna wanna go down to this button down here, which is the transform tool that you'll wanna use. Um, for this first stage, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to turn animate current frame off. And so the reason I'm going to do that is I just don't want animation keyframes to be generated as I, as I demonstrate this part. So I'm, I'm going to do the transform tool and you can see I move it around like that when I'm directly on the drawing. And if I want to move the pivot point directly on a drawing layer is I click on this button and you can still see the pivot point right there and I can move it to that location. And so now when I do the transform, I can rotate by hovering my cursor out on the outer edge and I can move it around that way. And so the reason that I bring that up is when you're trying to move the pivot point on that peg, it's gonna to be totally different. So when we create a peg in just a moment, we're not gonna change the anchor point there. We're gonna do the, change the anchor point with this special transform button up here. Um, this button works as a rotate tool, but it also works as a, an anchor point changing tool. So I'm gonna turn that off and so now I'm going to bring up my animation right here. You can see his anchor point is currently over there, but I'm gonna create a peg, and so that's not gonna matter. The, the peg and the drawing's anchor point are you know, totally disassociated from one another as far as I'm concerned. Let me show you how to create a peg. There are several ways you can do it. You can, in the timeline, I could hold down plus and go down to peg, and then create a peg that way. This is giving me an error. So if that if you get that error message, you can go up to Windows, Toolbar, Display, and Display All, and I should be able to do it now. Um, so if I press plus and go to peg, there we go. I, I, you can create a peg directly in the timeline. And so in the timeline, when you create a peg, remember this is a parent of that animation object. I can collapse it. So it's almost like a group in a sense where you can kind of collapse it and hide it. It is normal that the, the peg will show up as an empty looking layer in the timeline. So um, 
don't don't worry about that. That's the way that's supposed to be. You'll also see that over here something changed in the node view. Oh yeah, before but before I go into that, we can create a peg in the timeline by pressing this plus, going down to peg right there. There's also see this button right there where you can just create the peg directly in the timeline that way. So let me go over ways you can create the peg in how do I need that? Uh, in the node view. So in the node view, I'll just go ahead and I can, I'm going to click on this peg and I'll delete it. So I just press delete. So the first way you can create a peg is just select the drawing node or the drawing layer that you want to do. And then I'm on a Mac, so I'll press Command P. And if you're on a PC, just press Control and P. P as in peg. And that'll create a peg that's already linked to the drawing. Another thing you can do is if you're having trouble remembering that shortcut for any reason or anything like that, the way that you create nodes in the node view is you, you can click on this empty area, press return, and you can run a search for it. So I'll just type in peg, and I create a peg, and I can just attach it just by clicking on the small green icon and then connecting it right there. So I'll press delete on that again. So that's another way that you can create a peg. So um, the way that you'll see me create pegs 99.9% uh, .9 of the time is I'm going to select the drawing layer that I want to do and press Command or Control P, and that'll create a peg for that. And one thing that I'll show later in this tutorial is you can also create pegs for multiple drawing objects all at the same time, or you can connect one peg to, to many of these different drawing objects all at the same time. So that'll be coming up in, later in the video tutorial. So once I've created a peg, one of the first things that I like to do is in the node view, this little yellow box, that is the, the properties box for each of these different components. And so if I just click on that, I have the properties for the node view. And instead of the position being measured in 3D path, I just like it to be separate right there. And I'll close that out. All right, and so remember I talked about changing the anchor point when you're working directly on a drawing object, which is that button right there. But if I'm changing the anchor point on a peg, I need to click on the peg, go up here, and click on this rotate tool. On the rotate tool, if I click it from the center and drag it, I can change the anchor point. And if I want to rotate it, I can just click and rotate. And you can see when I'm rotating the peg, it's rotating the drawing, right? Because the, the peg is parented um, to the drawing object. And so that's the rotate tool. So again, remember the middle of it changes the anchor point. This outer part helps you rotate. I'll press Control Z. You also have this move tool, so this translate tool up at the top, so I can move the peg that way. Most of the time when I'm animating, I will animate the peg from down here with the transform tool. And with the transform tool, one thing I like to do is, so I have the transform tool selected right there. I have this button turned on. If you go up to Tool Properties, this button is turned on. And essentially that button, it'll make it more likely that you select the peg rather than the drawing layer. Because again, it's really important that you have your animation completed on the pegs rather than on the drawing layers when it's time to animate. Okay, and so I have the this animation moved over to the left. And let's say I want this animation go, to go from screen left to screen right. I'm going to animate the peg. So I'm going to turn Animate current frame on just by clicking right there. I'm going to click onto the peg and I'm going to generate and I'll, I'll create a video tutorial that will go much more in depth in animation. But to create my first keyframe, I'll, I'll again, I'm on the peg layer. I'm going to click on this button to turn to generate my first keyframe. And let's say that at the end of this animation, I want this to be on screen right. So remember, I'm in transform. And you want to hold your cursor so that you get that four arrow line and you can click and drag it. And if you hold shift while you click and drag, that locks it to left and right. And I'll let go. And you can see that generated a second keyframe and interpolated between those two keyframes. And so now when I press play, my little bouncing ball will move from screen left to screen right. So that's one way to use a peg. So next up, what I want to do is I have these two other drawing layers, and I'll just click on those, and I'll press A to re-enable them, or I could have just turned on the visibility of the eyes on the, the timeline. Also notice right here, I'm sorry to kind of go back, but notice that I can collapse that peg, and so it makes it so the drawing disappears. So doing collapsing these is a really nice way to make sure that you, when it comes time to animate, that you're animating on the, the pegs rather than the drawings. Okay, so what I want to show you is I can 
create multiple pegs at the same time. So if I select both of these just by dragging and selecting, you can also hold control, or I'm sorry, uh, control on a PC, command on a Mac. I can select multiple of those at the same time. And if I press command P or control P, it'll create one peg that's controlling both of those drawings. Or if I press shift command P on a Mac or shift control P on a PC, It'll just create two pegs at the same time and save you just a little bit of time. And remember, I like to click on this yellow box and change that to separate in the, the properties. Okay, so one trick here is I have my square drawing and you can see when I select using this transform tool, the drawing directly, it changes to this pinkish color. And when I select on the peg, it's this more reddish color. So just keep that in mind if you see that kind of pinkish purplish color, that means that you've selected the drawing rather than the peg. So that's just one thing to kind of keep in mind there. What I'm gonna do is, is a final thing to show, is I'm gonna show you how to animate each of these individually. So I have a square. Remember, I wanna change the anchor point. The anchor point's up here on the peg. And so I'm gonna click on this button to change the anchor point. If I click in the center of it, I can move the anchor point to right there. And I'll just let go. And on the triangle, I'll do the same thing. So I'm just looking for this rotate tool and I'll just put it right in the center. Next up, I'm just gonna create some animation directly on these pegs and something I'll do is I'll just collapse the drawing layers to make it a little bit easier to kind of keep my timeline organized. And on the square, I'll just create an animation where it's just squishing up and down a little bit. So I'll click on the first, I'll, I'll move my playhead to the beginning. And on the first frame, I'll just generate a keyframe right there. I'll go down to, I don't know, let's say frame 20, turn animate current frame on, and you can see when I select it's turning yellow, so that's a good sign, I'm, I'm on my peg layer, and I'll just squish it down, I'll move here, I'll squish it up, and you can see it automatically generates these keyframes for me, and then finally at the end, I'll just have it squish back down again, and so I have a little animation where the square is just going up and down, and finally, on the triangle, I will just click on this first frame, create a keyframe, go to the end, and using the transform tool, I'm just gonna have this rotating around a few times. There we go. And so now when I press play, I have all that animation going. And so why am I showing you all this? Uh, there's one last thing I wanna show is, which is, again, we can attach a peg to control multiple things at the same time. And so what I can do is I can select all these pegs and I can just drag and select like that. You can either drag and select them all like that, or you can hold Command like that on a Mac, Control on a PC. And now, if remember, I just want one peg to control, control them all right here. So that shortcut is Command P on a Mac, Control P on a PC, and that creates a peg and it's already parented for me, just like that. And so on this peg, I can, the anchor point's right there, that's, that's fine for me right now. And I can go down to transform and I'll go to the first frame and I can control these. Oops. I can control these all at once. And if I hold shift, that'll kind of keep it in proportion for me. Remember when you're moving a peg, you want your cursor to show up with those four arrows to move it around. So I have my first keyframe there. I'll move to frame 24 and I'll say I want it to go up there. And Let's say at the end, I want to go down here and get a little bigger for some reason. Okay, and so now when I press play, I'm moving everything all at once using pegs. And so this concept right here is pretty much the foundation to 2D character rigging. So um, when you're creating your 2D character rigs, you're going to want to work in pegs and animate with pegs. And you're, wanna you're going to want to, when it's time to animate, it, you really want to avoid having it directly on your drawing layers like this.